put the title on me, you're never going to get it back. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I'm going to hold on to that title forever. What are you thinking? It's almost like giving me this NXT job. Wade Barrett's never going to get his job back. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Out of Character. I'm your host, Ryan Satin. This week, we've got five-time, 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 five-time world champion. I think I said that five times. Booker T on the show. So excited. Former WWE backstage cohort here on the show talking about all the stuff you'd want to hear him talking about. But first... First, I just got to get this out of the way real fast. If you're watching this on video, if you're on the YouTube channel, what's up? I appreciate it. But make sure you pick up your phone wherever it is. I know it's in your general vicinity. Pick it up and go subscribe to the Out of Character podcast feed because you're not just going to get this show on audio. You also get every week Raw and SmackDown Roundup episodes as well. I'm breaking each show down segment by segment, giving you my thoughts on everything that happens. So make sure that you're subscribed to the Out of Character podcast feed. I don't want you to miss out. I'm looking out for you. I know that you want to hear what I think about the shows, and this is your chance to do it. Now, with that, that all out of the way, here's my conversation with five-time world champion and WWE NXT commentator Booker T. Booker, I appreciate you taking the time today. I want to start this episode the same way. I start off every episode of the show, and that's asking my guest, how much of your real true self is there in your on-screen persona? Oh, man. Uh, I guess I guess a lot of it um, in, in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways not. Um, uh, of course, I try to tap into my real-life experiences to make me feel a certain way, you know, when I'm doing something to make me react, you know, just like say, for instance, I've been in a real fight before, so I know how to react when I get hit in the eye, you know, just, or hit in the mouth. It really doesn't hurt that bad, you know. It, you know, pisses you off more than than it hurt, you know what I mean? So, uh, I use that, but but I still try to um, take myself to a place to where I've never been before, also because it's, it's art, you know. Um, and and if you're just thinking about your yourself and the way you are all the time, you're never going to be able to reach you know, your full potential as a performer, uh, excuse me, as a performer, just did NXT last night. So my voice is a little hoarse. You gotta, gotta excuse me for that, but uh, you gotta be willing to um, expand, you know, if you want to be a great performer. Do you think there's a difference between your on-screen persona when you were a full-time wrestler and the way you are now when you're just a commentator or broadcaster? No, I mean, I really think both are the same. Even, you know, when I do commentating, um, I'm not like my like myself self. You know, I have to tap into, you know, um, a character, you know, that I feel comfortable with in order to really portray what's going on on screen. I just can't talk about it like Booker T would. It, it wouldn't sound right. Um, um, so I'm, I'm still thinking about, there again, the performance, um, the entertainment side, even though um, a lot of my commentary is, a lot of, you know, who I am as well, because, you know, like just say, for instance, last night, I was talking about Sir Mix a lot, uh, you know, double up, double up, you know, that's my music, <laughs> you know what I mean? So and you gotta be able to, you know, bring it uh, to the forefront, especially uh, when you got people listening to you that come from, you know, that same culture that you did. I was listening to L Cool J on the way here to the studio and it was Mama Said Knock You Out, which is a fairly popular song. And I was listening to the lyrics for the first time, like paying attention to the lyrics. And I was like, damn, he's talking about like shooting someone and stuff. And this song, like, Ella Cool J is harder than I, than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that, but then again, you'd be able to draw from that, you know, and you'd you, you be able to use that. I remember having a chance to do a, do a scene with um, LL Cool J. And, you know, um, you think, like you were just saying that you didn't think he was that hard, but when I met him in in person, I was like, man, this dude looks hard. <laughs> you know I mean? He looked like he'd been there, and he was he was he was a little bigger than I was. Too. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute here, no, 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 seriously, yeah, you draw from that. Yeah, totally. Well, okay, so you said that there are differences between your on-screen persona and your off-screen personality. What words would you use to describe just you yourself at home, your off-screen personality? Stupid, laid back, funny. You know, I mean, I, I try to keep everybody laughing at home. 
Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I joke around and do stupid stuff with the kids, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, um, I, I try to be as regular as I possibly can be. Um, when people meet me and, and, and they talk to me and they go, wow, man, you're just so regular. And then they say, but they say, but I see you on TV. So it's like, it's like all the time, you know, you know, but for me, um, uh, you know, just trying to be as regular as I possibly can, I think is what keep me focused and, and keep me driven to, you know, just keep doing what I'm doing. You actually used a word that I would use to describe you just from an outsider perspective, and that's driven. Like, I look at you, and I was, like, trying to figure out what maybe, like, some of your hobbies are or, like, what you do when you're not working. But then I was like, man, you know, this guy has kind of turned all his hobbies into some kind of job in some way where he's, like, making a business out of it. And it's so cool to me that you're driven to kind of, like, always be doing and giving back and, and, and still – you know, creating when, you know, you've had such a successful career as it is. Yeah. I mean, I thought about retiring when I was 30, uh, I was trying to figure out how, how, how am I going to get away, you know, get out of the business, but I'm going to walk away from this. Um, and still be able to um, have a productive life, still be able to move forward and still be able to create. Um, and I, 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 I somehow figured it out. Um, like you say, um, wrestling is my, it's, it's my hobby, but it's my trade at the same time. And, you know, to have my wrestling school now for 18 years, working with so many young people, trying to get them to the next level, it's, you know, I've been so deep in the work. I haven't been, you know, um, you know, too, too, um, I haven't been thinking so, too much about anything else other than work. And now I'm doing it with NXT where I got a, a lot more students to work with and they're picking my brain. So it's just, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm in my best life. You know I mean? You, you live, you know, today we're going tomorrow, you know, we just lost Anthony Rumble Johnson at 38 years old, you know, UFC fighter, you know, um, you know, Bellator fighter, mixed martial artist. And, you know, you just, you know, you just put the work in and, you know, when, when you remember it at the end, you know, that it's the work that you do in the middle, you know, um, that, that really, really counts. So I'm just, just still trying to put the work in. Dang, you thought, okay, so wait, <laughs> you were thinking about retiring at 30? Yeah, I started thinking about retirement at 30 years old. That's crazy. Um, I started thinking about how how I was going to walk away from just because I got a chance to sit next to you know one of my heroes, um, Wahoo McDaniel, and he was like in his 50s at that time, and he was pretty beat up, and you know he had a little trouble putting his boots on, and I was like, man, I got to figure out how to get out of the, out of the business, um, and still be able to, you know, move around. Like I don't have any hip replacements or knee replacements, uh, show none of that stuff. You know, I had my knee scope twice when I was, when I was working, but I figured out how to perform, um, a certain way and still be able to entertain the fans, you know, to the highest level. Um, and then there again, prepare myself to be able to walk away from this and still be able to have fun, you know, uh, because I think that's what life is about, you know, having fun every day, every day you wake up, you should be, Thinking about trying to have some fun work, of course you got you got to put the work in. But um, you know, having fun is very very important. It's cool to hear, you know, because I've I, a lot of times on this show I, I'm talking most of the time on this show I'm talking to current wrestlers who are on the the main roster right now or NXT, and so you know I'm hearing them talk about working with guys like you or you know Triple H or whatever uh, Undertaker. Uh, but it's cool for me to talk to someone like you who has those interactions with the, the the even older legends you know the the, the super legends like a wahoo mcdaniel or you were trained by ivan putsky like it's cool to hear someone you know talk about what that older generation was like because i feel like it's so different those guys are so different that and the way they ran the business was so different than what you see now yeah it is i mean it was um different um but it was a different time you know different era you know and you know that's just that's just generational um and I, I think about what i had of of course and the um the mentors that actually you know guided me through and then i see myself now in that same position you know with a lot of young kids and, and i tell you man they they come and they pick my brain and they want to know exactly what it takes to get to the top but you know what it takes to to work at the at the at the main event level and um and like i say for me um I have no ego or anything like that. Uh, I, I I don't have an itch to scratch or anything like that either, you know, as far as getting back in the ring, you know. So for me to be able to pass that knowledge on and for these young kids to, you know, really uh, be able to take it in and 
you know, take them, you know, take their careers to the next level. It's it's amazing, you know, it, 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 and I can't really tell you, can't really uh, make, tell you or explain, you know, how much I really get from something like that, you know, but it's, it's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, I can imagine. I, I can imagine, you know, when you kind of help catapult someone and you get to see them live their dream, I, I can only imagine it's one of the most rewarding feelings there is in your position and why you would do it for 18 years because you just want to kind of keep chasing that again, you know? Yeah, I can only imagine how many young kids, you know, one day going to be, you know, when they go into the Hall of Fame, they're going to be thanking me, you know? <laughs> 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 that'd be crazy man you know but that's where i think um, i stride um i think that's where i feel like i do my best work um and that's you know patting you know these young kids on the back telling them that you know how how, how good they really are you know and how far they're really going to go uh, i think that's what i'm up I think that's my best, you know, one of my greatest assets. When they come to you and they ask you that question, which is a very vague, hard to answer question of like what it takes to the to get to the top, do you have like a like a an answer you give to the person who you don't think is actually going to make it to the top versus the ones you do think are going to make it to the top? I mean, the ones that I, I don't think that's going to make it to the top or make it to the next level, I, I, I'm I'm br I'm brutally honest. You know, um, because it's a, a brutally honest business. You know what I mean? You, you, only the strong survive, you know, in the wrestling business, you know. So if someone don't have it, you know, I, I tell them to look in the mirror, you know, uh, check the guy that's next to you, you know, and you got to understand and, and know if you're better than that guy. And you know it. You can't lie to yourself. Uh, and the ones that, that do have it, you know, I, I tell them, you know, to, you know, understand what, you know, having a playbook means um, under, understanding what it means to, you know, uh, work and, and perform. And, and, and I don't like giving six secrets away or anything like that. That's why I try to talk in code. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ser no, I'm serious. You know, no, that makes I'm sense. Always, totally. Yeah. I'm always, no, I'm serious. Always, Cause they gotta, they gotta come to the school and pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's five grand. If you, if anybody wants to know, <laughs> but, but no, um, knowing the, uh, the, the I, I, like I was explaining uh, to some of the guys at NXT uh, um, just just yesterday, uh, before I uh, before I left, and uh, I was talking to them. I say, hey, wrestling is like you know the, the great the great wrestlers. I say, you know, just picture yourself as as, as a mechanic, okay? And you, you think you're a really really good mechanic, okay? And you you take the you take an engine apart, um, you know, four fifty five big block engine. You take it apart, you know what I mean, piece by piece. You know what I mean, because you want to lube it up, you want to get it all ready, you want to make sure it's gonna weather the storm for years. And then you put it back together exactly the way you took it apart. But when you put it together, it's still four or five pieces over there. And you go, damn it, I, I missed something. But then you see it's, it, it's together. You crank it and, it, and it cranks, and it sounds perfect. And then you ride down the road, and, and you get two blocks, boom, and everything blow up. And you realize you needed those five pieces. That's what wrestling is. You cannot leave one piece out because that's, that's what the engine runs on. And, and it's a very, very simple concept. And then they go, oh, man, okay, all right. It makes them thought, start to think. And that's what I need them to do, first of all, start thinking. All right, well, I'm not going to ask you for more lessons because you got to pay for the rest of those lessons, people. <laughs> that's, and that's five grand. <laughs> <laughs> you all owe Booker T five grand now for that little bit of wisdom. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are you currently enjoying most about doing uh, commentary again? I'm having fun. I think that's what I think that I'm, I, I think that's it more than anything. Uh, I think. Having fun, I, I said that earlier, it's very important. Getting that weekly dose, uh, uh, sitting at that table, watching those young guys go out there and perform at a very high level. And, 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 and then to add my form of commentary is uh, is pretty, pretty cool because I'm not a, uh, excuse me, a traditional uh, commentator or anything like that. I don't uh, claim to, you know, uh, you know, be like Michael Cole or, any of these, I can't do that, but I can still, <laughs> but, but I can entertain you. I can make you go, man, this is, this is fun as well as I, I can be a very educational. Um, 
and I can really make the match feel like it's something really, really going on at the same time. And I think that's what wrestling is. Um, you got to, you got to, wrestling is not like boxing. It's not like MMA. You know, that, that those sports are brutal. You know what I mean? Wrestling is a relief. You know, I remember the old grandma with the brick in the purse, you know, trying to whack somebody back in the day, you know, you know, just coming to the matches, one to have, you know, some fun. Every time I, I go to a, a convention and, and I and I hear the stories, you know, from over the years, all of the stories are so great. All of the stories about, man, we had so much fun. Man, I remember, you know, the, the night when y'all tried to get, you know, the Undertaker to do the spin of Rudy, you know, it that's what wrestling is. So that's what I think about when I do it. And 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 that's the only way I can do it. And, and if you don't want that, you got to get rid of me and replace me and put somebody else out there. <laughs> I always think about that too, though, that like wrestling's supposed to be fun because sometimes pe the, 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 the most hardcore fans, they get so stuck in the like, this is a serious thing, like the world title, serious, blah, blah. blah. And I also like feel like, we forget that fun is the thing that brought us to, to wrestling. Like it's, it's fun. It's a 24, it's, it's a 365. It's always happening. It's something that is always there for us to, to get us our mind off of the regular world that we're dealing with and just have fun. And so, uh, you know, yeah, I think, I think it's a little bit of everything, you know, I mean, it's those moments, you know, those world title moments, it's, you got to have some seriousness, um, you know, going into, you know, some of those matches. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just like we did a contract signing last night, and it was very entertaining. Um, but when those guys, you know, show up next week, you know, when Wesley and, and Carmelo Hayes show up for that North American Championship match next Tuesday night, those guys better be ready to go and ready to perform at the highest level and show me something. I'm serious. Now, that part, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a switch right there. So, for me, that's the part I love because – Wrestling is a little bit of everything. It's to be embellished. And that's what I love about it. But you even, you know, back in the day, I feel like you did a good job of like towing that line between like being serious when the moment called for it in a promo, but still being entertaining and fun where like I was laughing at you being very serious because of like the words that you would say, be like, oh man, this guy's going to kick that guy's ass or whatever. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I do think that, and I actually was talking about it on my uh, Raw recap show this week where I felt like Riddle and Gable are two really good examples of people who can like be fun in backstage segments, make you laugh, make you entertain, shoosh, bong, all that kind of stuff. But then when they get in the ring against each other, like you're getting this technically sound match between two top level athletes. Well, that's what wrestling has always been for me, um, to be able to make you laugh, you know, um, be able to make you cry and then tick you off at the same time to where you really want to see that guy get, 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 get beat, you know? So, I mean, I get it. I understand where a lot of fans come from, but for me, wrestling has always been, you know, that inner form of entertainment where I've been able to escape. When I started uh, doing this, you know, back in 1990, and I was sneaking from one side of town, you know, like in the neighborhood where all my homeboys were, they were hardcore you know, brothers. I'm sneaking to the other side to go play wrestler. You know, <laughs> it was the coolest thing in the world, you know, to be able to escape, you know, and, 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 and I was like, you know, I was an army character. I was GI bro. I'm like, you know, I, never, I always wanted to be in the army. You know what I mean? So for me, that's what wrestling has always been, uh, you know, caught some shrapnel um, you know, from that scar in the back, you know, some shrapnel from back in Grenada, you know, when I <laughs> just making up stories. You know, so I'm saying that's a story I told back in the day, you know, like Grenada. <laughs> Grenada. Just throw that out there because it sounded good, you know. <laughs> it sounded good. It sounded real good. <laughs> you know? So, you know, that's what wrestling for me, it's always been, man, yeah. When it. did you finally tell your friends, like, hey, man, I've been dressing up on the other side of town in face paint as an as a army officer and wrestling? Well, I, I didn't really tell anybody, uh, but when they, they did find out about it, a lot of my friends thought I was pretty stupid. <laughs> but, man, that's not going to work out. Wait, so you know, they you, you didn't tell them? They just found out on their own? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I was on a local show here in Houston. 
and uh, and it came on every Saturday night, <laughs> and they got a chance to see me uh, performing. And I, I look, I, I mean, you know, I look kind of it, it could it could look kind of stupid to a lot of people, you know, um, but for me, uh, I found something that I loved. When when I first got into the wrestling ring, it was like deja vu. It seemed like I had been there my whole life. I say, man, this is something I think I can do. You know, I feel like, you know, I might can, I, I might can figure this out. And, um, you know, lo and behold, you know, the rest is history. How did you get your start? How do you get from Houston to to WCW? Where how, how did you get your foot in the door in WCW? You know, just following my brother around. My brother, um, you know, got a tryout in uh, the Global Wrestling Federation. I followed him down there. And, you know, the guy saw me and he said, who was that? You know, he said, that's my brother. And, and um, you know, fast forward, you know, they, we created a tag team. They have any experience and we wrestled in the Global Wrestling Federation as a tag team for like 18 months. And Sid Vicious called us at the Sportatorium one night in Dallas, Texas from Atlanta, Georgia. And said, hey, man, how would you guys like to come to WCW? And we like, man, we love to come to WCW. We never did independent shows or anything like that. We just worked at that show. It was on television, ESPN. So we was just waiting to get discovered. <laughs> And that's what happened. That's crazy. Like the Sportatorium, legendary arena for wrestling. You got Sid Vicious calling you. You're, it's like it's like a you're going to WCW. Like that's such like a mix of so much pro wrestling history in one night right there for you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was it was great. Um, actually, stayed with Sid Vicious for about three months um, at his apartment as well. He was a good dude. Um, I give Sid all the credit as far as um, getting us that big break. In WCW, we was in the main event, uh, our first pay per view in WCW, <laughs> War Games, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, pay per view that Dusty Rose created. Got to got to got to think that's something pretty special. I, I love that they're doing War Games at Survivor Series this year. I'm, I'm, I've loved the ones they did in NXT, and I feel like the main roster uh, they're gonna kill it uh, being able to do that at Survivor Series now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, everything. Right now, um, it's a buzz. Um, right now, is everything seems to be clicking. Um, everybody seems to be on point as far as going out and trying to bring the best out of their performances. I don't think um, it's been a better time than, than right now, at, at least in quite some time. I watch a lot of uh, WCW from that era you're talking about, uh, that we were just talking about. Uh, I watched WCW Saturday night a bunch before bed just because I wasn't really – I started watching in the Attitude Era, and we didn't have access to every single match like we do now on the internet. So I'll, I go back, and I'm kind of like watching stuff. And I love that era of like early '90s WCW Saturday Night. Uh, what do you remember most from from those tapings? Man, uh, I tell you, man, uh, I, I miss WCW. I had a great time getting you know polished up, cutting my teeth in WCW working with a, a lot, a lot of great talent. Um, just getting a chance to, um, just getting a chance more than anything. That's what, that's the only thing I, I was looking for in WCW with a, a chance and an opportunity. And um, I got several opportunities in that company. And every time I got an opportunity, I, I pretty much cashed it on it. You know, it's almost like, you know, uh, when I got the television championship, uh, it was because Rick Martel had forgot his boots. He didn't. He, he had forgot his boots, and he was supposed to win the championship that night from the Disco Inferno. And uh, he just—he thought he was coming to TV just to do an interview. And uh, so, but they still had to get the title off Disco. So they say, "Book, we're going to put the title on you, and we're going to give the Rick Martel, Rick Martel, you know, a couple of weeks down the road, whatnot. We'll figure that out. But we're going to put it on you tonight." And I was thinking, man, you put the title on me, you're never going to get it back. <laughs> You know what I mean? I was like, I'm gonna hold on to that title forever. What are you thinking? It's almost like giving me this NXT job. Wade Barrett's never gonna get his job back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what do you think? <laughs> you shouldn't have did that. You know, so I, have did I, that. I, was, I was always looking to come up, man. It's like Tom Brady and Drew Bledsoe. Let's all go out. You never get back here. You know, Wait, Barrett's so. about to get Wally pipped by you over there. He's just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I had him on the show a few weeks ago, and I was like, I was like, I don't know, man. Are you just going to give your seat back to Pat? And he was like, I'm probably going to have to. He was like, but Booker T, I'll fight for it. Booker T, I'll fight uh, for that seat. Uh, he, like I say, he, they, they, gonna, they, they might send him back to England. <laughs> <laughs> That, 
That's we got, the- we, we're having budget cuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, it's so funny to hear you say that about the television title because, like, yeah, you really like I, when I think of you. Besides your world title run, like I think about you and the television title, and so it's funny to hear like that that you weren't even supposed to get it because that's like that's what you tell people to do. Like, hey, you take that opportunity, you just like you hold on tight and don't give it back to anybody else, and like it really did help elevate your career after that. Nah, man, um, it put me on the map as far as a singles wrestler go. Um, I, w- I never knew how good I was or anything like that. Um, but the television championship gave me a, that first opportunity for the world to see, you know, how good Booker T really was. A lot of people thought I was, I was, I was good. You know, um, I was, I had the opportunity in, in my career, early career, to work with, you know, Steamboat, you know, you know, Mr. Perfect, you know, Ric Flair, you know, guys like that, and. Uh, and all those guys wanted to work with me, and they all, I guess it was like a test or something. I, and I never really, I always, I always knew I was talent. I always knew I was better than everybody in the locker room. I just didn't know how good I was. <laughs> it's one of those type of deals. Do you think you were kind of hesitant yeah. to go solo because it was a family thing? Like you didn't want to leave your brother hanging either? Nah, it wasn't anything like that. Uh, my brother and I, we, we had a good thing going. Um, running that tag team thing was great. Um, I think if I would have started out as a singles wrestler, my career wouldn't have lasted as long. I think when when I did finally become a singles wrestler, it totally reinvented me. I tell these young guys, if you don't know how to change with the times, the times will pass you by. So I think everything for me was uh, it was very, very meticulous as far as trying to make transitions along the road in my career, just like drawing, you know, like shaving, you know, the mustache and then, you know, growing a beard and then drawing grit. Yeah, you know, my dreadlocks. You know, everything for me, I tried to change with the evolution of time just so these young kids, this young generation, I wouldn't get lost in it. You know what I mean? So for me, um, I think having a tag team partner, it definitely um prolonged uh, my wrestling career. You and Jericho are definitely like a good example from that from that era of guys who reinvented themselves to kind of change with the times and stay current. And I feel like now Seth Rollins is like that guy who's and Miz too, to some degree, but Seth and Miz are kind of always kind of like changing their character up like a little bit, staying true to who they are as you know, that person, that character, but doing something new to feel fresh. And I, and I think that's important. I mean, just think about it for a second. If Seth Rollins was the same Seth Rollins that, came in and you know when he was i mean what was this what tyler black right <laughs> you imagine <laughs> he'd be done he'd be finished you know he'd be wrapped up you know so it, it, it is and it really is about entertaining i've seen people you know say some of the you know most ludicrous things about you know what wrestling is and None of those guys you know, have, have never made it to the, a major level or anything in wrestling, you know. So you got to be smart. Uh, you got to know how to think about, you know, your longevity. What do you, what do you, what, what what's most important um, in, in this business for for me? It was you know longevity and my health. You know, um, if I if if I had if I had my health, um, you know, and, my, and longevity, the money was good. That's obsolete. That's a that's a no brainer, you know what I mean. So trying to make sure you weather in this storm is so freaking important. You saying right there, you know, <laughs> the criticism from people who have never made it to the top of the mountain, uh, and not listening to them is, is that kind of why you're so good at? Because <laughs> you do get you're able to rile up the wrestling fans on social media fairly easily, and I every like week I see a new Booker T headline like Booker T this and people freaking out about some kind of criticism you had. Is that kind of why you're able to not let it affect you? Because you know that your opinions hold more weight since you've been to the top. That's one, that, that's one, uh, that's one reason. Um, I, I know what it's like. I, I've been there. I've done it. I've, I got a school I've had for 18 years. I, I got a wrestling promotion. I got a little small television show as well called reality. I've been around. <laughs> I've done this. Um, and then when I hear people um, talk about it that has never done it, you know, um, it, it doesn't bother me at all. When I when I say something on social media, though, um, or say something on my radio Hall of Fame, my radio show Hall of Fame, it's the truth. I never speak, um, you know, 
anything other than the truth. I don't do anything to belittle anyone. Um, and whatever I say on my show, I'm willing to say it in someone's face. And they know it. They know it. You know what I mean? So uh, everything is real um, um, when you hear it come from Booker T. And, and, and what's really, really cool, what's really, really cool is that the guys that, that know, they don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's been around that know me, you know, they, 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 cause they know I'm right. Uh, uh, 10 times out of 10 times. Uh, I'm normally right. <laughs> I love that confidence there, but also I can attest to the fact that you are brutally honest in person and on camera, because I remember my first episode of WWE backstage. I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like so nervous all day. I finally get on camera. I hadn't really talked to, I, we had our production meeting, but I was very focused on what I was going to say. And I'll never forget, like I come on camera and the first thing Booker T does is make fun of my beard on live TV in front of millions of people. And I'm just like, my whole, like, oh man. But after I went and looked and I was like, Made a good point. Clean I did up. need to fix my beard up a little bit. Clean it up, bro. Clean it up. <laughs> you know, I was talking about one of my students, one of my former students, um, um, Duke Hudson. Um, he's on NXT uh, maybe two, three weeks ago. And I was talking about how you know, I feel like he's slacking. I you know, feel like he's playing with house money. You know what I mean? And one thing about this business, the, the hourglass, the sand in the hourglass is running out. And he called me backstage. He goes, Book, I, I need to talk to you. <laughs> you know, so for me, I'm gonna shoot on these guys and let them know, hey, when you slacking, I'm gonna let you know. I might say it in a certain way, but know if I'm saying something, a lot of times, you know, you gotta know how to read into it. Um and 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 and, and ten times out of ten, it's to help you. Like the beard, you know. <laughs> Get your, get, your, get, your, get your game right, man. I, and back then, I had a lot of beard products. That you I did. You were, yeah. No, you were beard product <laughs> out, dude. You were super beard product out. And my hair, too. My hair my hair was messed up. My beard. I was so focused on what I was going to And it's a lesson for anyone who wants to get into entertainment. I was so focused on the contents of what I was going to be doing on camera that I didn't think about all this. I was just thinking yeah. about what I was oh, going to say. And then, hey, yeah, I never made that mistake again no, you on know, the show. But the thing is, you recognized it, though. You know, that's the one thing. You know, you recognized it, and and and, and, and you didn't make that mistake again. That's what this thing is about. For me, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna peep game. I'm gonna you know peep you to the game. You know what I mean? If you're walking around, if your collar's up, you know I'm gonna say, hey man, let me let me help you out, bro. I don't want you going out like that. You know what I mean? Your flies <laughs> open. You know you walking out on national TV. You think you look cool? He hey, did bro, that. Take... You did that once for me too. I remember like I think I had like a tag or something still on my suit, and you were like, bro. Like got it off for me. Uh, yeah, I think it was the bottom of your jacket. Yeah, it was like the bottom of my jacket. Bottom of your jacket. Like, let me. You, you can't. I can't let you go out like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, nah, man. That's that's what I'm about. Uh, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, uh, you know, uh, let somebody, you know, go out and <laughs> embarrass themselves. You know, even when they don't even know it. You know what I mean? Uh, if, give them game when you know, like I say, when someone else would just want to let them go out and you know, screw it up, you know, just because they got some kind of a agenda for me, man, I want, I want everybody to come up. You know what I mean? That's what, you know, this life, you know, right now we're living in is so toxic. You know, I, I want everybody to be able to be able to catch a flight and go overseas, uh, you know, go to the islands and experience. It's, I, I've had the greatest experience in life being a kid that, you know, grew up in South Park, Texas, who didn't, get on a flight until you got into this wrestling business. And my first flight was to Japan, Tokyo. That was your first flight? <laughs> my first flight I ever, you know, um, took was to Tokyo, Japan. We were just talking time. before we started recording about how you never get used to traveling. And now I know why. You started with Japan. That's an awful flight to start oh, with. But, 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 but it was an eye-opening experience. And but I it's go, so wow. long. <laughs> I say, this is what life is. You know, but when I got there and I experienced the way the Japanese culture was, the way they lived, I go, wow, this is the way life could really be. It was, it was so awesome. And I want everybody, I want every young person to be able to experience that you know, and the and only way that can happen is, you know, people come together and quit fighting, you know, um, all the time. I just want to get that out there, man. Oh, dude, I complete, I completely agree. I also hate the constant fighting, dude. I also, I think, like, I keep seeing all this talk of, like, Elon Musk and Twitter and how he's making all these changes. And I'm like, honestly, dude, if Twitter goes away, it might not be the worst thing for everybody. 
Might be a good thing. It you know might I mean? be I, a I good thing. Think, I don't. I don't. I, I think they're gonna fight like crazy. It's the same thing. I got. It's not gonna go anywhere. But it might be a good thing, you know, because people are so toxic and looking to want to drag somebody down, you know. And in in this business, in this wrestling business, I, I must say, so many. I was just talking about Dusty Rhodes um, just last night on the on the show, and I was talking about the legends, the gods of the of the sport, and Dusty was one of them, and he told me. Um, one time, you know, when I came back through the curtain, he said, you know, they won't put you on first no more. Dusty, he didn't have to say that. And he, didn't, he, he, he probably didn't realize how much those words really meant to me to the, to, the, to, the, to the point that I still hold on to them to this day at 57 years old. They won't put you on first no more. Man, they let me know, bro. I'm, I got something. You know, if Dusty said something like that, you know, so... Yeah, man, it's all about bringing people up. At what point in your WCW run was that when he said that to you? That was before any TV titles or anything. Crazy. Yeah, I was a kid, you know, you know, out on a house show going out performing and, you know, and I come back through the curtain and Dusty say, no, nah, it was a TV. And um, I come back through the curtain and Dusty say, no, nah, they won't put you on first no more. And I was like, yeah, man, that, that, that was that was just pretty, it was an eye opening experience, you know, uh, because I wasn't born in the business or anything like that. But I've always studied the great ones. And Dusty was always high on that list as far as guys that I studied as being one of the greatest entertainers that I had ever seen. Guy that could move the people to the point to where you would get up and go and buy a ticket to, to show up at that arena to, you know, to cheer for for that man, you know, so. Um, yeah, yeah, it was it was unbelievable, you know, um, getting something like that from you know, someone like Dusty. Well, I don't want to not talk about your world title run at all or your time as world champion in WCW since there was a couple of them. Um, was it frustrating to have your first WCW title win be overshadowed by all that drama with Vince, Vince Russo and Hulk Hogan? And I was making so much money back then, and none of that stuff fazed me at all. <laughs> feeling you might say that because like well man i was everything was going good for me so they can they can have all that happen whatever I did not, you know what it didn't bother me one bit you know um the night I, I won the title i i don't i don't think people remember i had wrestled earlier that night um against uh, chris canyon and um i was like you know and when all the drama came down with hogan you know whatnot I, I, that wasn't my business all right. It really wasn't. Yeah. I was like, man, do I need to stick around or not? I actually remember asking the question, guys, do I need to stick around? Or can I, you know, bounce up out of here? And they tell me, no, nah, stick around. You win the world title. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me stick around and, let this, and see what's going to happen. Don't want a Rick Martel <laughs> situation happening, you know? I'm serious. I'm, I'm serious. I, I really was, I, I was that, you know, um, you know, I wasn't taking it back or anything. I was totally that. Um, um, I, I, I don't even know what the word to use, uh, but I was just totally unaffected by what was going on. Maybe that's that. Maybe that's you know, for lack of a better word, um, I, I just did not really care um, that much. I had never won the world title, uh, you know, at that point, um, but uh, when they told me you stick around, you win the world title, all the drama happened. And then I had about 10 minutes or less to prepare to go out and win the world title. That, that was what my night was. Um, and it was a, it was an epic night. It was a history making night too. It's something that people are gonna, you know, I wonder if people would have remembered my world type first title run without that um, as much as they do with it. I think they would have just because I think as someone who was watching WECW at the time, I remember. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know man, just think. Just think how big of a night that was for wrestling. Oh no, it was huge. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I mean, just, I mean, but I, I think it would think still be remembered. I think your you winning the WCW title would still be remembered as much, strictly because you were you know someone what? that like the fans were hoping would would get there finally. You know I think I think it would have. You know what I mean? Just like they thought, um, you know, that about Ron Simmons when he won it. But do you think Ron Simmons' title ring would have been more remembered if he had that controversy around it like I did? It's a great question. That's a great question. Because that is, I mean. Think about it for one you do, Because of all that, you are, like, your that moment is, like, on every, on lists that of big moment moments is, in that, wrestling. That and, is, it's bigger than anything. Yeah, true, 
True. Come on, man. Come on. I want the controversy. True. I, yeah, you you I, did win the controversy. That's true. You 100% came out the best out of all of that. Come on here. So I, that, for me, it was, I welcomed it. It was great when you look at it from that perspective. A lot of people may not think it that way, but when, if you look at it from this perspective, do you really think people would have remembered my night more without that? I don't think so. It's a great way I of looking at it. That's a great way of looking at it yeah. for sure. Does that mean then, you know, because the next what, like 10 months or something like that are fairly tumultuous in the company. But similarly, you're riding high during all of that. Did it, was it the same way, just kind of unaffected? Because you're like, well, this is still the best, like my career has ever been. So why would I care about all that? I lost a world title, won it, lost it, won it, lost it, and won it four times in, in WCW. So, so for me, I was just playing with house money at that. I did not, all I, only thing I was caring about at that time was I knew the company was going down. I knew the company was going to fold. I, I just knew that in my head. I, you know, no one had told me that or anything like that. I just felt something. I don't know, just like, you know, the old, the old guys say, I felt something in my bones. <laughs> something was going to happen. So I uh, I started preparing uh, myself um, for the, the end of WCW. Um, and that was to, to, to perform at the highest level, to go out and give the fans, you know, some great matches, you know, some great t content. And when, 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 when the light went out, um, you know, I would be, I would be ready. And that's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. I mean, I don't know how I knew it was going to happen, but I knew it was going to happen. And, and um, I, I put myself in a great position. Did I, did I know I was going to win the world title on um, the final night um, from, from Scott Steiner? I, I had no idea, but, uh, I, I was in a great position and they said, Hey, you the guy and how that happened. And it just, you know, by the grace of God, as well as preparation was the only luck I was going to have. I was, I, I was better than all those guys at that time. And, it, and I got blessed for it, man. I, I don't know how it's crazy. It's crazy how, how stuff happens. Oh, dude. And that time period, you were like, my guy, dude. Like, I remember that time period. I was like, so pumped when you won it on the final nitro. I was, when you were winning, in the, when you finally got in the main event scene, I was excited. I think your guys' theme song, the Harlem Heat theme, one of the best theme songs of all time. Like, I, yeah, I, I was so happy that you won that on the final nitro just because you did kind of embody, embody what WCW meant for a long time. So it was cool to see you get that kind of final nod. For me, it um, it meant everything because I started at the bottom of that company, at the bottom, all the way at the, at the lowest of the totem pole, you know. And um, I ended up at the top of the company at the end. At the end of the day, I closed that company down, man. I was the world champ uh, at the end of the night when the company closed. I mean, that I made history. I made history. Uh, and no one to ever be able to change it. No one. No one to ever be able to change it. And it was all just because of spricking some hard work and someone seeing um, my talent and uh, being in the right place at the right time. Wow, what a, what a freaking story, bro. Do you get to keep those belts when they went under? Nah, man, I never uh, kept the belts. I didn't, I didn't keep any of those belts, man. I, you know what? None of this stuff, none of it really meant anything to me. I, I mean... I didn't look at wrestling. I've never looked at wrestling like that. Wrestling is, for me has always just been a job. So that's the only thing it's ever been. I, I've never looked at wrestling as anything other than it's my job. Um, the 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 championship, um, you know, which which you know, like just say the the, um, the belt championship. You know, like I got on my wall back here. Um, I never really cared about that. What I what I cared about was the title. You know the t just the title being you know the world champion. Yep. yep. You know you know you're the guy that's carrying the company. You're the guy that we're giving the ball to. You know and, and you know we were believing in you to you know um, you know pull the load. You know because when you're the champ, you know when you when you, when, you're the, when you're the world when you when, when you when you when you got the title. Excuse me. When you got the title, you you're doing the outside work as well as the inside work. You're champion in the ring, out of the ring, all the time. It's a hell of a job. You know, so for me, uh, that responsibility, I think I look forward to more than anything. Well, Booker, I appreciate you being on here so much. I normally have a, a closing question, and I had a bunch of WWE stuff too, but as a old school Attitude Era fan, I had to get all that WCW stuff out of the way. Oh, and, and now we got a reason for you to come on in the future again, so we'll have to make it happen. <laughs> Booker, uh, make sure you guys check him out on NXT, doing commentary every week. Wade Barrett.
the voice, the voice of uh, NXT. Uh, you get that, uh, Wade Barrett. <laughs> you've got your warning here, so there we go. Uh, Booker, appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. Have a great day. Boom. Later, brother. All right, that was my conversation with Booker T. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I think I said five time at the top of the show. I think he's technically a six time, but he calls himself five time WCW champion. So you get what I'm saying here. Don't get up. Don't get caught up in all these semantics. You got what I was going for. All right, before I get out of here, let me uh, let me do a little bit of a uh, house cleaning here first. Make sure that you subscribe to the Out of Character podcast feed. That's where you can find this show in audio form every week, but also Raw and SmackDown Roundup podcast where I break both of those shows down segment by segment every week. So make sure you go subscribe and also leave a review or a rating if you like the show. If you didn't, pretend it doesn't exist. Also, make sure you follow at WWE on Fox on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We're all over those social media platforms, so make sure you're following us there. And lastly, if you're watching this on video, make sure you subscribe to this feed. This is a great channel. We've got YouTube shorts. We've got a community tab. We've got clips from Raw and SmackDown, clips from Out of Character, clips from everything. So make sure you subscribe. All right, that's it. I'm done. Officially tapping out for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Satin, and this is Out of Character.